Okay, welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at a new remix of Ubuntu, which is called the Ubuntu Web Remix. So it was released just about three days ago now, and the main idea behind this distribution is to give us a privacy-focused and open-source alternative to Google's Chrome OS, which is of course a web-based operating system. So for the most part, we're going to be using a lot of web-based applications, but instead of using Google Chrome, the browser that's going to be tying this all together will be the Firefox web browser. So this first release is based on Ubuntu 20.04.1. Now I don't hate the idea of a distribution like this, it all kind of depends on how it's all been implemented. So reading the release notes, there appears to be some interesting stuff going on. We have a new easy web app format. We have an experimental web application store. We have integration with the eCloud services, which I'd never used before, but in preparation for today's video, I've gone ahead and created an account so we can check out all of the services that we get with the eCloud services. And then last but not least, we have experimental Android app support. So much like Google Chrome OS, we will be able to use Android applications on our Linux desktop, and it will be using the Anbox Android emulator to get us there. So with that being said, as per usual, we're going to install it natively onto the main computer here and take a look around. So it's using the standard Ubuntu installer. Let's just very quickly run through these steps. English UK, let's test that keyboard and continue. Right, so we want the normal installation and install third party software. So it's now going to start scanning for drives and operating systems that are currently installed on this computer and then we can choose which drive we want to make our installation on. Okay, and here we are, and it's apparently picked up an installation of Mac OS, but I'm not sure how because there is no Mac OS currently installed on this computer, but we're going to go for a race disk and install Ubuntu. And we're going to be using the Sabrent NVMe and click install now. Now I'm just going to imagine it will be following the same sort of partition scheme as all of the Ubuntu's does, and it does indeed, so that's two partitions, one for our EFI and then the rest all assigned to root using the ext4 file system. So I'm also going to imagine it will create a swap file, but we'll check that once we are all installed. London is the place to be. Now let's name our computer, and we're just going to keep this one nice and simple and call it Webboy. There we go, living the dream. Type in our password, and as per usual, we're going to log in automatically. Now as soon as I press continue, I'll start my stopwatch, and I'll be back once this has finished. Okay, so the installation has complete and it took a little bit longer than I would have expected from an Ubuntu based distribution, clocking in at around about 6 minutes and 11 seconds. With that being said, let's reboot and check out our freshly installed Ubuntu web desktop. Okay, so here we are, our Ubuntu web desktop, which is actually the GNOME desktop environment, but it appears they've stripped quite a lot of it back so you don't get all of the GNOME applications out of the box. And a lot of this does just appear to be web-based applications that we'll go into in just a moment. Now the desktop itself is pretty clean looking. We have one extension from what I can tell so far, which is of course dash to panel, which has given us our panel at the bottom with our task manager and our application launcher. So we can of course go into the settings here and change the way it looks and feels as well as make it smaller and add panel transparency and all of that good stuff. But for now, we're gonna leave it on the defaults as we take a look around. And let's just quickly see if there's any fancy new wallpapers for Ubuntu web. Okay, there is quite a few. We've got, yeah, not too bad actually. Let's try this little blue one out. There we go. We're going to leave it on that one as we continue through the rest of the video. Right, applications wise, out of the box, we get e calendar, e contacts, e email, e files, e notes, e photos, and e tasks. And this is all part of the e cloud suite of services that we'll take a look at in just a moment. We then have Anbox, which is how we're going to run our Android applications. Archive Manager, Calculator, Document Scanner, and DTube, which I've not actually used before, so let's open that up. So that's going to open up straight into a Firefox web browser, and it appears to be a video sharing service of some kind. Let's keep moving. So that was DTube. We, of course, have Firefox, which is going to be tying everything together. And we do have local files, which is going to be Nautilus. It is indeed, so it appears just to be a standard version of Nautilus. As you can see there, version 3.36.3. Let's keep going. We then have uh, Mastodon, which is a sort of social media site. So if we click that, again, it's going to open straight to the Firefox web browser and then open up that web page. We then have the Open Web Store, which we will go through in a minute and test it out with some web application installations. So it appears to be quite a clean interface so far. I don't think there's a whole lot in it at the moment, but we will check that out in just a minute too. 
we then have remove web app or run a file. So I think the runner file is how we actually install a web application. We'll test that out in just a moment as well. We then have GNOME screenshot settings, SoundCloud, which again is going to be a web application. And I think that might be everything. No, we have system on a terminal and then Twitter, which is of course a web based application. OK, so with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the web store and see what we can also install now. So in education, it's got the one entry of Google Classroom music. We have SoundCloud, which is already installed social network. So we have both of these already, don't we? We have Mastodon and we do have Twitter as well. So in streaming, we have DTube and YouTube. So let's test out the installation with YouTube. So it's going to download a little script by the looks of things there, which is called install dash YouTube. And let's go into the file system now. And it does appear just to be a little script. It is indeed a little shell script. So now if we go into the install, is it run, run a file, we can test out the installation. So straight to download, install YouTube, download in progress, installing. Oh, this asks us for a password. Okay, and I guess that's done. No, password was incorrect. Let me do that again in a moment. Right, let's do those steps again. So run a file, download, install YouTube, type in our password, and that should be good to go. It is, so that's done. It's about to close finished while we're in here let's open this up with a text editor and take a look so it seems to be a very simple little script here set e w get grab the file install and done so super simple stuff let's close that off now and then go into our application launcher type in youtube and bang there it is so again it's going to open it straight into our web browser which is all going to be done with firefox so i actually quite like the um the icon there for youtube Right, next up, what we're going to do now then is test out how to remove a web application with this little button here. Right, so we can now remove an application. So we're not going to remove anything apart from YouTube. So let's go ahead and remove that now. Again, it's going to ask us for our password and then it's going to just remove that and be good to go. So that's now uninstalled. So if we go into our application launcher once more, type in YouTube and bang, there it is. So very straightforward and simple stuff. I don't mind that at all. Now what we're going to do is check out the eCloud sort of services here. So we're going to start with e-email and I've made an account. So let's give that a go. It's still saying that we've done multiple logins. Hopefully we can get into it. Tylers.tech. What did I name this? At e.email. Oh, and if you do go ahead and create an account, just a word of warning, it's probably going to go straight into your spam folder when it asks you to activate it. At least it did for me. Password. And we should be all good. It's taking a little while to log in there. Therefore, your next login is throttled up to 30 seconds. OK, maybe when I was making the account on this IP, I went a bit too crazy and it sort of thinks there's something fishy going on. There we go. So we are in. So here's our email sort of inbox there. And it appears actually just to be an instance of Nextcloud. It is. Yeah, it's Nextcloud. So if we go straight into our settings, I don't think we have the option to add additional applications, though. But as you can see, they're developed by the Nextcloud community. So that's quite interesting. And it gives us 5 GB free. And of course, if you have the e sort of smartphone stuff, it means all of your files will be synced across this and your desktop operating system, which is a pretty cool thing to do if you've got it paired with the e phone stuff. So let's see what apps it has and services has actually included in here. Cause like I said, it's not giving us the option to install additional apps. It's not that I can see, but we can do email contacts, calendar, photos, notes, and tasks. And you can actually sync all of this with desktop applications as well. It appears that we have no sort of only office added. And I don't think we have an office application installed out of the box. So that could be something that they could see if they could sort of implement sort of a way to do like online synced word document kind of stuff. You can install LibreOffice Writer and then use WebDAV to do it and save it remotely. But that might add quite a few additional sort of megabytes on this kind of install, which when you're trying to keep everything quite light for a web based sort of distro, I'm not sure if that's something you would want to do. Now, the only issue with that is if we was to click our e-files, that's going to go straight to a web browser. So we might want to be able to sort of look at our files in our local file manager. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can set that up with DAVs. So let's go into the settings here and we're just going to copy all of this over. 
and see if we can get this set up on our actual file manager here. So we're going to go to other locations. Uh, uh, DAVs. I think that's what we want. And let's also remove the HTTPS because I think that might not be required. So let's give that a go. Right, so the part user account that we just used for our eCloud login was tylers.tech at e.email. And then we're going to type in the same password. And then hopefully, if we've done everything correctly, we'll now be able to browse our sort of cloud files on our local file manager. Okay, so it's taken a little bit of time, but it is now asking us a password for the key ring here. So I do believe this has worked. So let's just do a quick little password. And now we should be able to actually access our files straight from within our file manager. So that's pretty cool. So again, it does mirror the way Google Chrome OS does it because on Chrome OS inside your files manager, you can also use your local files and your files saved on the Google Drive. So that's pretty cool that that all works. So let's just test it out with a new folder and just call it test or test it apparently. There we go. So there it is in our file manager. And now let's go into our files here and see if it appears there. Perfect, so that's all working absolutely fine. So what we're gonna do then is just jump into the GNOME settings and see if they've done anything sort of different in here. Right, so I can't see online accounts. So it appears they've actually disabled the online accounts. I'd wonder why they might have done that. Interesting, okay. Right, so I guess what we're going to do is do a reboot, see how much RAM it's using, and then we'll start playing around with things. We'll open up Anbox and see how that all works out of the box. So let's do that now, and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we are back, and it's not too bad on RAM, actually, and you wouldn't have expected it to be too bad because, like I said, it doesn't include a lot of the sort of core GNOME stuff that you would find on a sort of fully beefed-up GNOME installation. So it's using 744 MB on a fresh boot, and it has actually indeed created a swap file of 2 GB. Now I'm not 100% sure if I was sort of drafting an idea for a web-based sort of distribution if GNOME might have been my first choice because it's not the lightest uh, desktop environment out there but if it works it works. So what we're going to do now then is check out how the whole Anbox Android applications do work out of the box. So let's go straight to Anbox. There we go. Now it's going to take a few seconds for it to actually load into it, so I'm going to skip ahead and we'll be back once it's actually there. Okay, and here we are. So as you can see, it's preloaded with quite a few Android applications already, and you can actually, sort of additionally, if you wanted to, install the Google Play services as well using Anbox. I've done that before in the past. But out of the box, we've got these applications here. So let's give this all a go. So we've got our calculator, opened up nice and quick, no lag there, calendar, clock, contacts, email oh we've got a bit of a lag now oh okay we're getting a bit of a weird a weird moment let's go to files okay we've got a little bit of a slowdown here because we've opened up multiple applications but i do believe email was now also just opened up right there now we've got files there we go and we've got gallery music settings and web view so that all works pretty quickly and it's nice to see that out of the box without any issues at all. And I think these are the dev versions and not the snap versions of Anbox either. So do we have snap? No, we don't have snap deinstalled out of the box whatsoever. So that will be the .deb sort of packages for the Anbox stuff. And do we have any flat pack support? No. Right, so we're not gonna spend too much extra time on this distribution because as it currently stands, there's not too much currently that we can actually do on it without completely changing the overall feel of this kind of desktop. So we could go ahead and install a load of desktop applications, but as this is meant to be a web-based operating system, it kind of defeats the whole purpose of it. But what we will do is because I do want to see how they've done the theming and the extensions and stuff. So we are going to go ahead and install GNOME Tweaks. But as you can see, now that we've opened up Anbox, it's also now populated our applications overview with all of those Android applications. So we can jump straight to them from within our GNOME application overview. So pretty nice stuff, really. So let's close all of this off now. And then what we're going to do is install GNOME Tweaks. And hopefully it doesn't pull in too much. And then we can have a look at the theming and the extensions. Apps install GNOME Tweaks. Is that the name of the package? I can't even remember. It is indeed. Okay, cool. 
So for the most part, it, you know, it is just an Ubuntu installation. So you will be able to pretty much install everything you want, but then you're getting outside the realms of what this kind of desktop distribution is exactly for. So let's open up tweaks now. There we go. And let's have a look at how things have all been set up. So appearance wise, we are using the adapter applications theme. The cursor is Yaru and the icons are Papyrus and I thought they were. And then the sounds are all Yarrow. And if we go into the extensions, so yeah, very sort of light on the extensions there. We are just using dash to panel, but there is quite a lot you can do in the dash to panel settings as well if you wanted to change the look up a little bit. So if we go into style, we can make it a bit of a smaller size. We could then change the sort of color stuff to override some sort of background transparency like so. And my favorite thing of all is doing the dynamic panel transparency, which means when you've got a full screen application, it will then go into a solid color and sort of be a bit easier to sort of see what's going on. But I think we're going to wrap it up there because like I said, we are going to have to wait until it matures a bit and there are a lot more things to look at because so far in the web app store now, we don't really have too much that we don't already have installed that we can take a look at. But for the most part, these are the web app. Oh, it does have some other sort of social media stuff there, social networks. So you can also get Instagram and Facebook. But again, it's going to be just sort of a, a direct link to the actual web web address so I just I don't think you're going to get any sort of advanced features this way I know I don't really use Instagram but I don't think on the web you can do like direct messages and stuff like that so again it's not going to give you that kind of stuff but again if you wanted to install some Android applications you can go ahead and do that as well so let's just quickly install Instagram for example so we're going to run a file we're going to go to our downloads once more and just like we did with YouTube we're going to go ahead and install Instagram after a quick password prompt and we should be done. There we go, so that's installed. And again, we can just type in Instagram and it should take us straight to the homepage of Instagram. Perfect, I actually quite like the way they've done the icon theming though for these web applications. So let me just check out the Instagram one. Yeah, not too bad at all. It might get a bit annoying when you sort of notice that everything's got its own kind of shape and size. So if they could get that a bit more uniformed, that would be pretty cool. But for the most part, I'm going to wrap the video up there. I don't think a lot of you should go ahead and use this yet because, like I said, it's still quite early on and there's not so much that we can really do out of the box at the moment without changing the entire distribution. But for the most part, that's been the Ubuntu Web Remix. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and also join the Discord. There's a link in the description and there'll also be a link to my Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.